Hey, what's up, guys? You're listening to the Digest This Podcast, and I'm your host, Bethany Cameron. Today, we are talking about obesogens, and it is a Bite of Knowledge Monday. If you're new to the show, every Monday, we come out with smaller clips that are called Bites of Knowledge. And then on Wednesdays, we have a longer interview podcast. So today, as I mentioned, we are talking about obesogens, what they are, where they're found, and what they actually do to the body. Because surprisingly, a lot of people don't know about them. And you may be doing all the things to losing weight, keeping weight off. And you're like, what am I doing? I'm eating right. I'm exercising. I'm doing all of the things. And it could be something that you're not eating, but maybe it's something that you're actually exposed to. Uh, Maybe it's in your shampoos. Maybe it's in your food containers, shampoos, your lotions. And these are actually affecting the way that we look, surprisingly. We're also going to talk about how to minimize our exposure from obesogens and the ways we can do that, the best ways to protect ourselves, the type of water we should be drinking, the type of basically everything that we can do in our means to protect ourselves from these chemicals. But before we get into this episode, shout out to podcast listener and reviewer, JNova1123. They rated the show five stars, titled it So Informative. They wrote, each of Bethany's podcasts is so rich with quality information. I love listening to the Q&As, especially because they cover so many different topics. Glory to God, Jesus Christ for this page. It's truly helping so many people with their health, finding real food and products to nourish our bodies with and care for ourselves is so hard to find these days. Thank you so much for that wonderful review. And if you haven't done so, I do encourage you to place a review and and rating yourself. And I love reading them and knowing that it truly is helping those out there to better their health. So let's get into the show. Do you want free coconut colds? I am giving away two large jars of Coconut Cold's original chocolate flavor and their limited edition strawberry lemonade flavor to two of my podcast listeners for the month of September. This is $80 worth of organic, vegan, dairy-free coconut yogurt with living probiotic cultures. You can literally feel working right when it hits your tongue all the way down into your belly. You can't get this limited edition flavor in stores and you have to be a Coconut Cult member to even get their limited flavors unless you enter to win. All you have to do is rate and review this podcast to enter. That's it. So be sure to leave your Instagram handle in your review because that is how I will be reaching out to both winners. So again, if you want $80 worth of Coconut Colts probiotic vegan yogurt in chocolate and their limited edition flavor, strawberry lemonade, just give this show a five-star rating and review. Good luck. Did you know you swallow five to 7% of toothpaste every single time you brush your teeth? That's an entire blob of toothpaste every seven days. And most commercial toothpastes are filled with harsh chemicals, artificial flavors, preservatives, titanium dioxide, and dyes. And I often get asked on my Instagram what toothpaste I recommend. And for a while, I was trying to find one with better for you ingredients and something that actually made my mouth feel great. Because I've tried so-called non-toxic toothpastes, but I never felt like they were actually getting the job done, if you know what I mean. And they didn't even leave my mouth feeling fresh. But I'm so glad to have stumbled across Bite Toothpaste. These are actually tablets you put in your mouth and bite down on to start your brushing experience. Bite toothpaste bits are so convenient, you just pop a bit in your mouth, chew it up, and start brushing. It will turn to a paste just like you're used to, but with no plastic tube or messy paste. It took a few times for me to get used to it because my entire life I've been using a paste, but now I love them. I also love their mouthwash bits because I can carry these tablets wherever I go and do a quick rinse even in my car. 
Bite also now has a natural teeth whitening kit. So if you've been looking for a natural toothpaste without the paste, try Bite toothpaste tablets that come in glass jars to help reduce plastic waste and experience what I and so many others are obsessed with. Bite is offering my listeners 20% off your first order. Go to trybite.com slash digest or use code digest at checkout to claim this deal. That's T-R-Y-B-I-T-E dot com slash digest. So what are obesogens? Now, obesogens are chemicals that could influence or promote obesity in humans as well as animals, and there's no argument that obesity rates are on the rise. In fact, by 2030, that's less than seven years away, you guys, half of the population is predicted to be obese, not just overweight, but obese, which is an actual health concern, and obesity causes tons of other health issues. Recent studies are beginning to look at the environmental factors that may contribute to this, which are called obesogens. These chemicals are found in everyday household items like food containers, toys, cookware, personal care products, and cleaning agents. And because they're present in such a wide range of sources, we are getting bombarded from all areas and accumulation from multiple sources is easy to obtain if we're not careful and mindful of what we put in, on, and around our body. Now, when these chemicals enter your body, they may alter the energy balance regulation to favor weight gain. This is according to a study found in the National Institute of Medicine. So today I'm covering some of the most common obesogens, how they may affect us, and how to minimize our exposure to these chemicals. First off is how do obesogens function? Now, they are considered an endocrine disrupting chemical. This means that they can interfere with your endocrine system and thus your hormones. And because endocrine organs and hormones help regulate your metabolism and body weight, your endocrine system plays an essential role in energy balance and fat storage. According to multiple studies, obesogens may promote obesity by increasing the number of fat cells, increasing the storage of fat in existing fat cells, altering the rate of fat cell production versus destruction, shifting energy balance to favor calorie storage, changing the basal metabolic rate, which is BMR, which is how many calories your body needs to fulfill its basic functions, altering gut microbiota, to promote food storage, and lastly, modifying hormonal control of appetite and fullness. Research has also found evidence of endocrine disrupting chemicals in the placenta and the umbilical cord, suggesting that human exposure to obesogens starts as early as the mother's womb. Exposure to these chemicals in such early stages of development may influence obesity later in life. It could also increase the risk of diseases like diabetes and metabolic syndrome because the enzymes involved in their elimination are not yet fully functional. This is again, according to multiple studies sourced from the NIH. And the impact of prenatal exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals on a fetus's metabolism is so important and impactful, it may even be transmitted to future generations. Now, there are many types of obesogens or endocrine disrupting chemicals. One you've probably heard of, it's BPAs. Now, BPA is a synthetic compound used to make plastic and different types of food storage containers, even beverage cans, and even cans that are like canned food, canned beans, things like that. So thus, it's found in numerous food and beverage containers. It has a similar structure to the estradiol, which is the main female sex hormone. And since estradiol is a type of estrogen, BPA easily binds to these estrogen-related receptors in the body. And according to a test tube and animal studies, this may induce insulin resistance, inflammation, oxidative stress, and promote the formation of fat cells. 
Humans are largely exposed to BPA when eating food stored or reheated in BPA-lined containers. And because the compound is not fully attached to plastic, it can leach into your food as a result of changes in pH and temperature. BPA has sadly been found in newborns, children, and of course, adults. It can be measured in bodily fluids and tissues such as blood, urine, saliva, breast milk, and fatty tissue. Now, this is something kind of cool. If you want to test yourself to see if you have accumulated BPAs, there's actually at-home urine test kits you can purchase online. One I found is from home dot dash health dash chemistry dot com where they they actually sell these kits for only like thirty dollars and it's pr- it's a pretty fair price if you ask me they also have other at home test kits for detecting lead mercury cadmium uh, chromium parabens all sorts of things and those are also for about thirty bucks and what I really like about these tests is that you get instant results so you don't have to send it back to a mystery lab and wait to get the results. You get the results in your home instantly. So I'll be sure to put that link in today's show notes so you can check it out and see if this is something you want to test for yourself and for your family. Now, while research suggests that BPA may cause harm at high levels, the Food and Drug Administration considers BPA safe as long as the amounts are small. However, according to a study published in the NIH, the levels of BPAs found in the general population is linked with increased prevalence of obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Another obesogen are phthalates. Now, these are a group of man-made chemicals used to make plastics more durable and flexible. They're present in toys, medical devices, food packaging, detergents, soaps, shampoos, nail polish, lotions, and perfumes. The most common phthalates is DE. HP, and that's a chemical that binds to receptors of the main male sex hormone. This impairs testosterone synthesis, resulting in effects that may contribute to the development of obesity. Phthalates may also affect hormone receptors called PPARs and other cell signaling pathways involved in our metabolism. The primary form of exposure is consuming food and beverages that have been in contact with phthalate-containing products. Phthalate particles in dust are also a significant source of exposure, and most test tube and animal studies support that DEHP and other phthalates affect the development of obesity and type 2 diabetes. And adults aren't the only ones affected. Studies in children have linked these compounds to increased body mass index and obesity risk. Phthalates are found almost everywhere and have been detected in over 75% of the U.S. population. But the CDC states that the levels found in our everyday products won't necessarily cause harmful health effects. And the FDA even claims that there is insufficient evidence to say that phthalates in particular pose a safety risk. This is quite concerning to me because since 2017, Europe banned tons of different types of phthalates like DNA. DINP, DIDP, and DNOP, which are, again, different types of phthalates used in children's products. And even on the fact sheet on the Prop 65 warning website, they state, and I quote, DINP is on the Proposition 65 list because it can cause cancer. Exposure to DINP may increase the risk of cancer. DINP can be greatly released from consumer products into indoor environments such as homes, schools, daycare centers, offices, and cars. It settles on floors and other surfaces and can accumulate in dust and air. Exposure can result from contact with products containing DINP. Low levels of DINP have been detected in some foods that have been in contact with plastics during processing and packaging. During pregnancy, DINP can pass from mother to baby, end quote. 
So I'll let you be the judge on whether you want to believe the CDC and the FDA or other research out there on phthalates. Now, another endocrine disruptor or obesogen is atrazine, which I've actually talked about this on my Instagram before, not in regards to obesogens though, um, but atrazine is a widely used herbicide in the United States. And uh, though drinking water is not a frequent source of human exposure, atrazine is one of the most commonly found pesticides in surface and ground waters in regions where it is used. So like BPA and phthalates, atrazine has hormonal altering effects and it reduces the sexual production and function in humans. According to the NIH, animal studies show that long-term exposure to atrazine may increase the risk of obesity and insulin resistance. Research has also shown that overall herbicide exposure has a potential effect on chronic diseases such as diabetes, cancer, and birth disabilities. If you're listening to this and you have gut issues, well, keep listening because it turns out everything you think you knew about probiotics may be wrong. You guys, it can get pretty confusing with the market saturated with probiotic everything. I mean, there's even probiotic tortilla chips. Come on now, really? <laughs> I need to give you my personal take and share what I got introduced to back in October of 2022. And that is Seed. Seed's DS01 plant-based capsule is not only a probiotic, but a prebiotic. There are 24 different strains of specifically formulated probiotics targeted for digestive health, gut immunity, as well as additional systematic benefits. One of my favorite things about Seed is that it's a capsule within a capsule. That's right, there's actually a prebiotic capsule encapsulating the probiotic inside, which ensures that the probiotics actually make it to your colon with 100% survivability But you may be asking, so what does Seed DSO-1 actually do? Well, many think of pre and probiotics as only gut support, but it does way more than that. It actually supports the gut barrier, which is where most of our immunity is and a vital part of our health. But it also supports other areas of the body for whole body benefits, such as skin health, heart health, and micronutrient synthesis. So get the real deal in a symbiotic, one that's backed by clinical trials and scientific data. So get the real deal in a symbiotic, one that's backed by clinical trials and scientific data. Go to seed.com slash digest25 and use code digest25 to receive 25% off your first month of Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. Again, that's seed.com slash digest25 and use code digest25 to get 25% off. I hope you guys love it. A research study from the National Science Foundation found that in all rooms of an average American household, the highest concentration of germs is found in the kitchen. Even more disturbing is the fact that the coffee maker is the fifth dirtiest item in the household right in between the pet bowl and the bathroom faucet. That same report notes that approximately half of coffee reservoirs have mold and yeast in their reservoir. It goes without saying that coffee makers are the perfect environment for bacterial overgrowth, which is why I threw my coffee maker away back in 2020 and started using instant coffee instead. But We all know how horrible instant coffee tastes and can be for our health. Back in 2020, I found La Republica Coffee, 
which makes instant coffee you would never know was instant. In fact, I found their coffee to taste even better than the finest fresh brewed coffee. And I'm not the only one who thinks so. Countless of my Instagram followers have come back to me saying the same thing over and over again. After recommending La Republica coffee to them, they're not going back either. Their process is like no other instant coffee out there with the result of fine powder, no shiny, big granules like the typical instant coffee. It is USDA organic certified, so you can feel confident no pesticides are used. Plus, it's mold free. It's time to toss out your coffee pot, which takes up space on your counter anyways, and switch to a cleaner coffee you can trust and feel. Once you try it, you won't go back to brewing, washing your pot each night, or buying filters. Go to LaRepublicaSuperfoods.com. That's La Republica Superfoods.com and use the code Little Sipper 10. That's L I L S I P P E R 10 for a discount. Organotins are another obesogen, and these are a class of industrial compounds. One of them is called TBT, and it's the active ingredient in antifungal paint applied to boats and ships to prevent the growth of marine organisms. Sadly, it's released into the water and deposited in sentiments contaminating many lakes and coastal waters. Test tube studies have shown that TBT promotes the formation of fat cells, while animal studies have demonstrated that its exposure results in increased fat accumulation and reduced muscle mass. Animal studies also show that when mice are exposed to TBT throughout pregnancy and lactation, third and fourth generation male offspring have more and larger fat cells. Now, PFOAs are probably something you've heard before, and a PFOA is a, it's used in waterproofing clothing, nonstick cookware, stain repellent, and microwavable food items. The main source of human exposure to PFOAs is contaminated water sources. Once ingested, it can remain in your body for long periods of time, according to the CDC. Now, like phthalates, PFOAs activates the certain receptors in your body that aid in fat metabolism. Studies in mice suggest that those exposed to PFOAs before birth had higher chances of developing obesity when they reached adulthood, as well as increased insulin, leptin, and body weight. Now, this is something we really don't think about, but cigarette smoke is also considered an obesogen, and exposure, exposure to cigarette smoke is the cause of many health issues just in general, but obesity is definitely one of them and not really talked about as often. Babies born to smoking mothers are often underweight, but tend to put on more weight during infancy all the way through adolescence. All right, so now that we've talked about the different types of obesogens, uh, let's talk about how to minimize our exposure to them. And while it's unlikely we'll be able to avoid all obesogens altogether just from the toxic world we live in. I mean, it's clearly just impossible. However, there are a few simple things we can all do to reduce our exposure. So get something to write with and take note on these next steps and takeaways to minimize exposure. If you're driving in the car, obviously uh, keep driving and you can always go back and reference this episode. Uh, you could save this episode as well. That way it's uh, easy to find to go back and reference to. So ways to minimize exposure. Number one, avoid foods stored in plastic. Use glass containers and bottles. Do not microwave plastics. In fact, using the microwave in general should be limited or avoided altogether. Uh, use clean cosmetics and skincare products. You can always go to the EWG's website and look up your personal care items you currently use to see the rating of the toxicity uh, or 
find a new brand on their website that they recommend. Uh, I personally use Dime Beauty Skincare and um, I can leave a link for 20% off their products in today's show notes as well. I think my code is a little sipper for Dime Beauty. Love their skincare. Um, Next up would be just like when using products in plastic, look for containers that are BPA and folate free. So again, if it is in plastic, it should say, you know, like BPA free and things like that. Another easy tip and swap is use fragrance free products such as hand soaps, laundry detergents, cleaning products. And I, I personally don't even wear perfumes. Um, I will also leave a list of the non toxic cleaning products that I use and laundry detergents um, in today's show notes as well. And I believe I have a code for them all, which um, should save you a good amount of money too. So another tip, throw away all your candles unless they are 100% natural and use essential oils. Uh, Choose non-toxic cookware. Again, I will put a link to the cookware that I love and use in today's show notes. Do not purchase stain resistant or flame retardant carpets or furniture. Make sure that you're sleeping on a good, clean mattress. And I don't mean like surface clean. I mean toxic free clean mattress. I have one. I have to go look. I got it back in 2020. It's amazing. It's very, it's non toxic and it's so comfy. Another tip use quality water, like drink quality water, use a quality water water filter that you can trust, not just a random one. Um, I personally use Aqua True. My husband actually introduced it to me when we first started dating and I've never looked back since. Uh, other water tastes completely different to me now. And I hate to be like one of those water snobs, but honestly, I have to bring my own water bottle wherever I go now because our water filter legit removes all the chemicals and impurities. So much so that it even removes all the minerals, including the good minerals. So we buy a natural mineral drops and add them back into our water, which I personally don't mind at all. Um, I will also, again, include a link in today's show notes, with, uh, which should automatically get you a discount on the water filter I use if you just click directly through that link. Um, now, last but certainly not least, eat fresh foods whenever possible, avoiding processed snacks, meals, and other processed, quote, food. Of course, eating a well-balanced diet, exercising, getting enough high quality sleep and managing stress remains the most important factors when it comes to your health. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Bite of Knowledge. And if you did, please share it with just one of your friends. Sharing the podcast on social media and tagging me at Lil Sipper on Instagram is something I love seeing. So I encourage you to take a screenshot of this episode and post it in your Instagram stories, tagging me so I can see that you listened. I'll see you guys this Wednesday for our interview episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a Resonant Media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Mike Fry. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.